Well, good morning, Genie Faith Center. Pastor Cooper here, and I'm very honored and um, just privileged to be able to worship with you all for our church online experience. And um, yeah, it's been it's been fun doing our in-person stuff, but I, I also really enjoy um, just doing this, just connecting with you all through our YouTube channel. And so my heart and my prayer is that our worship time and our message time, uh, that you would just feel a part of what we're doing. The Lord and the Holy Spirit are working through this, through these moments of worship and through our message. And, and what's so good is that God's truth prevails in all circumstances. And well, this morning, uh, we're going to sing a couple of songs. Got, got a new song I want to introduce also for us. But um, kind of something that I've been thinking through and praying through is, and just talking with different people. And some of us just are just tired. And I know, I know that I'm tired. And just all the different um, things that are happening in our culture and, and different opinions. And you got to be, like, correct on whatever you say, even if it's about, like, what type of ice cream you want or whatever, right? It's just, like, you have to just be, like, perfect. It's just, like, it's draining. And, and uh, one of the songs that I want to sing and just start off this morning is called All Who Are Thirsty. And it's a little bit of an older song, but um, it just really just allows us to kind of set this tone um, for this morning's worship just to say Lord Jesus come like we're, we're, we're crying out to you and and just put a fresh move in our heart and in our spirit this morning and um, that yeah that we would just uh, be renewed by who you are Lord and and not by what our culture says or by this person or that person but that we would be renewed by the the living water of, of Jesus right so that, that's my heart that um, this morning that we would just kind of be in that moment and we could just um, just engage in that moment. So I'm going to pray for us. We're going to sing some songs and then uh, we've got a great message um, that's kicking off our generosity campaign um, for our church. And so we are excited about that, um, to have an opportunity to be generous with what God has given us, what God has blessed us with, and to bless others. So let's pray. Well, Lord Jesus, um, right now we just submit to you and, and we just put aside all of our wants and our needs and we just say, Lord, have your way. Remind us of your truth. Bring us back in alignment with your heart, Lord. So Jesus, let this be um, a time to just be focused on you, Lord, and to, and to give you all that we have. And even though that should be every part of our lives, Lord, but uh, let's just dedicate this time right now to that. So, Holy Spirit, um, we just welcome you here in, in all of our homes and wherever we're watching this, Lord, and that you would just, yeah, that you would just minister to each one of us, Lord. Praise your name. Amen. And all who are thirsty, and all who are weak, come to the fountain. Dip your heart in the stream of life, the pain and the sorrow. Be washed away in the waves of His mercy. As deep cries out to Part of our life, Lord, we cry out. When come, Lord Jesus, come. Who we sing, come, Lord Jesus, come. Just kind of sit there for a little while.
sing, come, Lord Jesus, come. And all who are thirsty, and all who are weak, come to the fountain, dip your heart in the stream. Graves into gardens. You may have heard this on the radio or just in your own worship time. It's um, through the, the Elevation Church. And it just talks about how there's nothing better than God. That we can search the world, we can look high and low, and nothing will fill us except for the Lord. Amen. We're not going to find our fulfillment in any, in any other thing but Jesus. That's a good truth to have because. Man, we can go forever and ever and never find anything, right? But Jesus is there, the living water to sustain us in all seasons. Sing this out. I've searched the world, but it couldn't fill me. A man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never in. came along put me back together and every desire is now satisfied here in your love sing there's nothing better oh there's nothing better than you oh there's
you turn mourning to dancing, you give beauty for ashes. You turn mourning to dancing, you give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory, you're the only one who can. You turn graves into gardens, you turn bones into armies, you turn seas into highways, you're the only one. Sing that again, you turn morning to dancing. You turn morning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn great into gardens You turn bones into armies You turn seas into highways You're the only one who can You're the only one who can Sing all oh, there's nothing Oh there's nothing Better than you, oh, there's nothing better than you, though, there's nothing better than, better than you. Amen, amen. Your steadfast love can escape Your faithfulness an endless sea So full of grace and mercy We sing God is so good God is so good God is so good He's so good to me Ooh, You are so flows from your veins your kind is shown in all your ways we sing God is so good God is so good God is so been anyone 
God, you are good. God, you are good. And God, you are good. You're so Help our hearts before you, Lord, for what you've done, for what you've done in our lives, Lord. You are good, you are good, Lord, you are good. and make it clean Open up my eyes to the things unseen Show me how to love like you have loved me Break my heart for what breaks yours Everything I am for your kingdom's cause As I walk from earth into eternity Lord Jesus give you praise and honor right now for you are the source of life you are living water that quenches our thirst we find fulfillment only through you Lord not in our own thoughts our own opinions and what your word says or remind us of the good things that you have already done and will do in our lives Lord the hope that you have instilled in us through your son, Jesus. And God, continue to break our heart for what breaks yours, for people, for people who are far from you, who need hope in you, to serve others, to bless others, to be generous for others, Lord. Give our hearts alignment to what breaks your heart, Lord. Jesus, we again give you praise and thanks. Holy Spirit, open our hearts and our minds as we listen and hear from your word. Let it speak deeply to every part of who we are. That we wouldn't just watch a sermon online or sing with me online or whatever, but that our hearts would be changed. We would be challenged, we'd be encouraged. And that people would see that. They would see that change from what we post in our social media. They'd see that change in how we are acting and living our lives outside of our homes. And that our families would see that change inside of our Holy Spirit, do a work in us today. God, give us a heart of generosity. Let that flow outwards, Lord. Pray this in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining. Be blessed.
Hey, hello, it's me again, Pastor Cooper. Different outfit, maybe a different day? You will never know. Well, today is our Be Generous campaign that we are kicking off here at CFC. Um, you're gonna hear more about this in Pastor Mark's message towards the end of it, so stay tuned through the whole thing. Really key in, but we've been releasing stuff this last week through YouTube, our social media accounts, emails, text, all those things about how we're going to be generous here as a church, um, both locally and globally. So since you're watching this online, you're most likely kind of just doing everything online. So I want to direct you to our website at chinifaithcenter.org. And there you can go to our Be Generous page and you can see um, how we're going to be generous in the local way with the Chini Food and Clothing Bank and then globally with Think Small Ministries. And you can um, give directly towards them. And then also we have those We Love Chini shirts, which Pastor Mark will be wearing his during his message. Um, and all the proceeds for those shirts go directly to our local um, partner, which is the Chini Food and Clothing Bank. And so they are $20 a garment, and we got them for $6. And so 14 bucks is going directly towards them, um, which is awesome. And so we have all sizes. We have infant onesies, which I I tried one on, it didn't really work, I don't know why, all the way up to adult sizes. And so we wanna encourage you to um, purchase those and, and just spread that message that we love Cheney and that also that those proceeds are gonna to go to our local um, partner, which is the Cheney Food and Clothing Bank. So um, we have one just other thing that's coming up and that is the sanctuary event this Friday. So I'm gonna hand it over to Pastor Kate. She's gonna talk a little bit about that. And then I might come back in and then go into uh, Pastor Mark's message. Hi ladies, I wanna invite you to the sanctuary Friday night, July 24th, 7 p.m. in Cheney Face Center's parking lot. Our theme for women's ministries this year is 2020 vision. And when we set that theme back in 2019, we had no idea what our current realities would be. Thankfully, God knew and he is very good and faithful. One of the topics we had set way back then is, is Jesus seen clearly in me? And that's our topic for this month, is Jesus seen clearly in me? Right now we have a super opportunity to show Jesus in what we say, what we do, who we are. We also have a wonderful opportunity to continue to grow in Christ likeness. And so that's what we're gonna be talking about. When I think of Jesus being seen clearly in me, I think of the scripture, John 1:14, that says Jesus came from the Father full of grace and truth. Now, those may seem like two very opposing things, but Jesus displayed both of those perfectly in his life. And he's asking you and me as his followers to do the same. So we're gonna explore that. We're gonna make some personal application. It's gonna be a good night. I want you to know that if you come, please bring a lawn chair, a camp chair to sit in. We will be following the guidelines of social distancing, six feet apart, plus wearing masks. If that's not your jam or you don't feel comfortable being in a large group setting, I want you to know that we will also be doing a Facebook Live of this event. So you can show up in person or you can join us on Facebook Live. I wanna ask you to help us spread the word. Please invite someone to join us on Facebook Live or to meet you here at the in-person gathering. It is going to be a great time to be together. Last month, we did a worship night. There was about 30 of us who showed up. People said it felt so safe and it was so good for us to be together in a corporate setting. So we're looking forward to that again this month. I'll see you, whether it be on screen or in person, July 24th, 7 p.m. Well, thanks. Pastor Kate, I think the weather's going to be fantastic this Friday, so it should be a fun event. Um, bring your sunscreen. That's all I'm going to say, right? Because it's going to be hot and sunny. Anyway, uh, I want to also remind us that this Sunday we are not having our in-person gatherings or online church. We are deeming this day, we love Cheney Day. So that's July 26th. And what that means is we want to empower you, all of us, all of us, right? the whole church, to own our faith and to do something, to be generous as well with our time and our service and to do something in our neighborhood, for our city. Uh, it could be as simple as maybe making a meal for someone or you can go mow someone's lawn or clean up the street, whatever it might be. So obviously this year we didn't have our Cheney clean sweep, so it might be simply as you and your family just taking a walk and picking up trash um, down the road, wherever you're living at. And so we want to encourage you to own your faith in that practice 
practical way and to do something for your neighborhood and for your city that you're living in. So you're gonna hear more about this from Pastor Mark in his message towards the end. I wanna also remind us that we're not having an in-person gathering and we're not doing any online church as well. We are reconvening on August 2nd for um, church, for in-person gatherings, and we're gonna be live streaming those gatherings as well. So we're gonna have some more information on what that's gonna look like, but you'll have a chance if you're at home um, just to feel like you're a part of our in-person gatherings as well. So I wanna give you a heads up on those few things. Uh, with that being said, let's go to the message time with Pastor Mark. Hello, Cheney Face Center. Thanks for joining us as we creatively connect as a church in a digital way and you join us watching however you are, whenever you are. Uh, thank you so much for just being a part of Cheney Face Center. I'm glad you're here. Well, today... I'm going to conclude our series of messages entitled Christ Over Corona, and I want to talk about something really important that I believe the coronavirus is teaching us, and that is generosity. Generosity is a big part of our faith and is something that I believe we're all learning during this moment of the coronavirus. Hopefully, you've noticed uh, maybe some of your own needs and the needs of others around you, and you have made a choice to be generous. Well, this is a big concept, and I think it's a really important concept for us in America because I think it's a hard concept for us. I don't think our culture naturally has a bent maybe towards generosity. I think we give a lot, and I think we're good at that, but the biblical concept of generosity is a challenge. We do more, uh, we do more keeping than we do giving, maybe, and... Um, I want to just maybe push us towards a, a life that is more generous, a life that is more about giving than keeping, uh, and see some things in God's Word that can help us with that. But let me begin with this. I think generosity is important because our Heavenly Father is generous. One of the reasons that we need to be generous is because we are the representation of our Heavenly Father. We are the representation of Jesus Christ on the earth. And Jesus was generous. And God the Father is generous. The Holy Spirit is generous. Therefore, we are called to be generous as well. I mean, when you think about the things that God has done for us, it's amazing. First of all, I mean, he gave us this planet. He gave us earth. He created it for us. It's the only planet in any known solar system that we know right now that can sustain life. That's so interesting that God gave us earth. He gave us this planet and everything in it. And he called us to, uh, to work it, to take care of it, to be fruitful and to multiply upon it. This planet was given to us generously by God the Father. And then Jesus graciously, generously gave his life for us. He left heaven. He came to earth. He died on a cross so that you and I could have eternal life. That's extremely generous. The generosity there is overwhelming. And that's why we love him. That's why we serve him. And every single day, the Holy Spirit is in our life being generous to us and helping us live for Jesus and be on mission for Jesus these are the ways that we see God being generous in our life. Even in my own personal life, I was thinking about how God has been generous. And there's so many ways. It's not really a part of a message today, but I mean, God has been so forgiving and, and gracious to me. He's given me an awesome wife and kids and a beautiful home and fun stuff to take part of, a, a nice truck and cars to drive and, and boats to have fun with. And all these things are part of the way that God has been generous to, to me as a person. And I'm called now to be generous to Christ and to others with those things that God has given and to find ways to be willing to share. I want to spend some time in God's word and I want to show us some powerful things about this generosity because in James chapter 1 verse 17 James is clear that every good and perfect gift is from above coming down from the father of the heavenly lights who does not change like shifting shadows this is just a good reminder that one of the reasons that you and I should have this desire to be generous is because our heavenly father is generous and he's regularly giving us great gifts in fact, everything we have for life and godliness 
we find from God. Now, I want to look at some helpful verses and really just camp a little bit in three verses in 1 Timothy chapter 6, where the Apostle Paul is encouraging Timothy to be a good pastor and to present a concept to his church and, and to, to, that the believers of Jesus Christ should, should live this way. It's in 1, Corinthians, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 17 to 19. So look at it with me. Turn there in your paper Bible or find it in a digital way, in a digital concept. And um, let's begin at verse 17. Here's what the word says. Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Well, let me just stop right there. Uh, before I go very much further, uh, we have to decide something about verse 17, where Paul says, command those who are rich in this present world. Now, we have to decide right now, as Americans, if, if that applies to us. In this context, in this verse, are we the wealthy? Are we the rich? Are, are we the one that are supposed to be holding on to this command? And I would say, I think so. I think in America, we are rich compared to the rest of the world. Now, that's interesting because that's the context. That's the context that Paul puts it in. He says, command those who are rich in this present world. So in our world today, on this planet, I think in America, we are wealthy. We are rich. And I mean all of us. And you may say, well, Pastor Mark, I don't think I'm rich. I don't feel like I'm rich. That's probably because we compare ourselves to other American rich people instead of to the rest of the world. For instance, let's compare the world to us just for a minute and think about the things that other people in other parts of the world, most of the people in the rest of the world, would consider to be part of a, a rich person's life or a wealthy person's life. Things like a bed. A lot of the world sleeps on the floor. We sleep on a bed. How about carpet, hardwood floor, vinyl flooring, whatever flooring you have in your home? That is a result of wealth. Awesome wealth that we have in the United States. It's a part of who we are. In our house, in our car, in our camper, in my boat, there's carpet. And even these things, houses and cars and campers and boats, most of the world does not have any of those things. Therefore, that puts us in a category, the category of the wealthy. How about clean water? Clean water out of a sink that you don't have to travel very far to get. Much of the world has to walk to get clean water. We have several sinks in our homes or at work or a faucet out in our front yard that gives us clean water. A shower is a wealthy thing. The ability to take a shower every single day is a wealthy thing. Even simple things like soap and shampoo and toothbrush and hair and a hairbrush that we have every single day that we can use is a wealthy thing. Ladies, makeup. Most women around the world don't have makeup like we have makeup here in the United States. If you have more than three sets of clothes, that puts you in the category of the wealthy. If you have enough underwear to wear for the whole week, <laughs> then you're rich. That puts you in the category of the rich compared to everyone else in the world. Shoes. Let's talk about shoes for a minute. Most of us have several pairs of shoes. Some of us have too many pairs of shoes. But shoes are part of 
the life of someone that is wealthy. And then there's a lot of things that we don't even think about that make us wealthy. Things like paved roads. A lot of the world doesn't even have paved roads. You just drive on dirt roads. And there's something that I believe is an extreme blessing and is a part of being wealthy that I would say in America we take for granted in a large way. And we mostly take it for granted during the time that we are in it. But something that is definitely a rich thing, a wealthy thing, is the ability to have free education for 13 years. 13 years of free education. Only wealthy people get that around the world. That puts us in a category with the rich. So I want to encourage you, if you're in school today, if you're in elementary school or middle school or high school, don't take it for granted. It's an amazing, generous blessing that we have. And then there are other things that sometimes we don't even think about, like a soccer ball. You know, most of the world loves soccer, the sport of soccer. In fact, soccer is, or football, is the most popular sport around the world. And we probably have soccer balls laying around in our garages, a couple of them. When you travel around the world to other parts in the world, you'll find kids in parks all around the world, and they don't even have a soccer ball. They pick up an orange or a coconut or something else that they kick around or, or that they, something they find around and they just slap something around it. They don't even have a soccer ball. And we have garages. We even have storage units. We have large refrigerators. and We have grass. <laughs> grass. Grass in our front yards. Grass in our backyards. That's not a part of the homes of most of the world. And then as you think about it, we have clean water that we pour all over our grass with sprinkler systems. That's part of being wealthy. That's part of being rich. I say all these things because I want us to understand that God is speaking directly to us in these verses. He's talking to you and me. And he's talking to us about generosity. He's talking to us about having the heart of God instead of our own sometimes selfish way of living. And so he says, command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. In this way, they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age, so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. Now, there's a couple things in these verses that I observed, and I want to share them with us this morning to help us with generosity, because I've seen three things in these verses in particular that generosity does for our life. Here's the first one. Generosity helps us put our hope in God. It helps us put our hope in God. Now, this is super important because right off the bat, Paul gives two warnings. And the warnings are about our wealth. And he says these two things regarding our wealth. One, don't be arrogant. See, wealth and money can make us arrogant. It makes us think we are better than somebody else because we have more stuff than somebody else. And I think Sometimes in America, we, we think that. Sometimes we think we're better than anyone else. That's just kind of true. Um, and sometimes it's in an okay way, like maybe in a sports way or a competitive way. But sometimes it's just a mindset that we have. 
we're better than the rest of the world simply because we're wealthy. And that's not the mindset that God wants us to have. He does not want us to have an arrogant mindset. This also, when, when we're wealthy and, and we begin to compare each other in our arrogance, we compare each other based on what we have. And we want to keep up with the Joneses. And so we begin to compare ourselves based on what kind of car we're driving, clothes we're wearing, house we have, neighborhood we live in, economic status. That becomes how we value people in our culture and around the world. God doesn't want us to have that mindset. He doesn't want us to have that heart. He wants to, us to see every single person as equal, created in the image of God, ready to be loved by God, worthy of salvation in Jesus Christ. But wealth can cause arrogance and can cause our mind and our heart to think in improper ways. See, humility is the goal of a Christian, not arrogance. So he says, don't be arrogant. Second, don't put your hope in wealth. This is an important one. Don't put your hope in wealth. Now, why shouldn't we put our hope in wealth? Well, Paul's clear, because it's uncertain. Physical wealth, material wealth, earthly wealth is uncertain. It's not a for sure thing. And I would say that the coronavirus has taught us that, hasn't it? The coronavirus has taught us that our wealth and our material possession, even our income, what we're investing in is not a sure thing. Even the stock market has not been a sure thing right now. It's uncertain. So material things and material wealth are uncertain. The coronavirus has taught us that. It's also interesting that the coronavirus doesn't care about our material wealth. It doesn't care that we're rich. It just, it, the virus is attacking everybody. But it's interesting. There's been an interesting statistic during this whole season. You know the group of people that have, that have most interestingly not dealt with the rate of the coronavirus like everyone else has? The homeless. The poor. The poor in our culture and around the world not everywhere around the world, but especially in America, are having less coronavirus cases than the rest of us. Now, part of that might be because they naturally isolate. Part of that might be because they don't have homes to go home to and things where the virus is attached to and they're touching. And, and, and so it's, it's just a natural byproduct of being homeless. But it's interesting right now that the poor are somewhat healthy in America. That's not necessarily the case around the world, but the poor here are healthy. Generosity helps us put our hope in God. Why? Because God is the only secure thing. Our eternity, God himself, heaven, it's the only secure thing. And when we are generous towards God with our time, our talents, our abilities, the ways we serve, with our finances, it reminds us about what is really important. About what's important in this life and in the next life, and that is our relationship with God and our relationship with others and the way that we help people believe in Jesus. See, when we have a habit of giving our money away, with a generous heart, then money and wealth lose their attachment to our heart and mind and to our attitude. We begin to think differently as we are generous with the things that God has given us. See, generosity helps us put money in the proper perspective. We don't see wealth as a way to be better than others. We see wealth as a way to serve others, to serve people in Jesus' name, to take the kingdom of God to the ends of the earth. We recognize that wealth is a way that we can help Jesus accomplish the mission of making disciples of all nations. This is God's heart for the world, and it can become our heart as well. See, generosity helps us put our hope in God instead of other things. 
Generosity also helps us store up treasure in heaven. Now, this is an interesting concept, storing up treasure in heaven. It's a biblical concept that Jesus started in Matthew chapter 6. So let's jump there really quick. Look at Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 to 21 with me. And this is something that Jesus said while he was teaching. It's an interesting concept. And I'm going to read it from the Passion Translation because I just, I liked the way that the Passion said it. But here's what Jesus said. He said, don't keep hoarding for yourselves earthly treasures that can be stolen by thieves. Material wealth eventually rusts, decays, and loses its value. Instead, stockpile heavenly treasure for yourselves that cannot be stolen and will never rust, decay, or lose their value. And then verse 21. For your heart will always pursue what you value as your treasure. Your heart will always pursue what you value as your treasure. Now, Jesus was right. Our heart will pursue what we treasure. If we we treasure earthly material things, we will pursue them. If we if, we want, if the things in our heart are the things of the kingdom of God, obeying God's word and living on mission for Jesus, then we will pursue the things that God tells us to pursue. That's just reality. Now, Jesus affirms what we talked about earlier, that earthly things, the things of this life, the wealth that we assume, consume and, and accumulate, It can all pass away. And Jesus also makes mention that it can also be taken away, that it can be stolen, and it can lose its value. Therefore, what Jesus says is be wise about where you invest. Now, let me bring some balance to this thought. Jesus is not saying that we shouldn't plan for our future here on earth or that we shouldn't invest in things on the earth so that we can take care of ourselves and our families in the future. That's not what Jesus is saying. In fact, there's a couple other stories we could grab and pull in where Jesus says we do need to think about the future and it's not wise to to not think about the future and what's going to happen in the future and take that into account uh, in our life in the present day. So that's not what Jesus is saying. What Jesus is talking about is our priority, where our heart is at, where our mind is at, what our life is focused on, and and what we are making number one in our life. He's talking about if we made a list of things that are most important to us, would the most important things at the top of our list be earthly things, or would they be heavenly things? Would they be godly things and things we find in God's word? Or would, be, would they be things we want or we desire that are on earth, that are possessions and values? That, by the way, if we hoarded those things and left them in our garage, would what? Would rust and decay and lose their value. So what Jesus is talking about is, is investing in things that will give you the best return. And the things that will give us the best return are things that don't rust and don't decay and don't lose their value. And those things happen to be spiritual things, heavenly things, eternal things. They don't rust. They don't decay. They don't lose their value. And so Jesus is challenging us and encouraging us to invest in the kingdom of God. And this is what he says. He uses these two phrases as dichotomies to help us understand that. That sometimes we hoard for ourselves earthly treasures, but Jesus says, instead, stockpile heavenly treasure for yourselves that cannot be stolen or lose their value. See, Jesus is talking about investments that have greater rewards. Now, the same is true on earth, right? There are certain investments that yield greater rewards. If you go to the stock market, there are certain stocks that yield better than others. And it would just be wise to invest in the ones that have a greater return, 
That's what Jesus is talking about. If you want the best return for your investment, invest in things that will never be stolen from you or lose their value. And the only things that will never be stolen from us or lose their value are spiritual things, heavenly things, kingdom things, being on mission for Jesus. Now, an investment in God's kingdom, Jesus says, will always yield a higher reward than anything else on earth. This is why the Bible commands us to give God our tithes and our offerings first. First. Before we do anything else with our income, we should give to God first. Why? Because it puts our priorities right. Gets our heart right. Gets our mind and our heart and our spirit focused on the mission of Jesus Christ to make disciples to the ends of the earth. So we're putting God first in everything. Now, Jesus is clear. The best investments are ones that send your treasure to heaven where it can't be stolen from. Now, you may be asking the question that I was asking. Does this mean that the good things we do on earth in Jesus' name and for his kingdom are building heavenly wealth for us? Well, that seems to be the case. Yes, we are building heavenly wealth. Now, here's the challenge. Heavenly wealth doesn't look like earthly wealth. That's the challenge. The wealth that we will have in heaven will not look like the wealth we have on earth. So when you say, I'm doing this good thing for Jesus because I want a bigger house in heaven, I don't think it works that way. Uh, You know what? I'm tithing today because I want a better car in heaven. I, I I don't think that's how it works. I don't think that's how wealth works in heaven. I think wealth will work differently. It may mean that when you get to heaven, you will meet people that believed in Jesus because you gave to that missionary. And that missionary went to that foreign country and they shared the gospel of Jesus Christ. And and people in that language and tribe and tongue, they got saved. They got saved because you paid for a missionary to go there. And as a result of that, you may get to heaven and meet someone that got saved and their eternity is secure and they are in heaven because of your gift, because of your generosity, because of your giving. And you know what that is? What's the word? Oh, yeah. Priceless. That's priceless. You won't be able to put a measure on that. And that is a heavenly reward that is far superior to anything else. Now you may also be asking, how do I send my treasure or my investment to heaven? How do I invest in heavenly things? Well, the Apostle Paul gives us three ways in verse 18, and they're really simple. He said, command them to be rich in good deeds, to be generous, and to be willing to share. These three things, and there's many more too in in Scripture, but these three things in particular in this context, when you're rich in good deeds, when you're generous to the kingdom of God, and when you're willing to share, it sends treasure up to heaven. That's the way that you and I can be generous and can live a life of generosity. Now, this type of generosity is also important because it changes our heart. It changes our life. It changes the trajectory of our life and what we're doing and how we live it and what we decide to do every day when we wake up and what our priorities are. It leads us to the last thing that generosity helps us with, and that is that generosity helps us take hold of the life that is truly life. To take hold of the life that is truly life. Now, here's what's interesting. If I'm, if I'm going to take hold of something, right? If I'm going to take hold of something, 
I have to be intentional about that. I've got to reach my hand out and I've got to grab it and hold on to it. Take hold of it. Now that's an intentional thing. That's a decision that I make with my mind and I follow through with it with my actions. See, I have to, you have to take hold of a different kind of life than our world is communicating. Our world is communicating a life of hoarding. Get what you can for yourself. Jesus is communicating a life of generosity, of giving, not hoarding, giving. See, the life Jesus has for us is truly life. It's not a life focused on ourselves. It's a life focused on him. It's a life focused on others. It's a life focused on telling the world about the salvation of Jesus Christ. Now, each of us gets the privilege of living life on this planet. But Jesus is clear. It doesn't mean you're truly living. It doesn't mean you're living the true life that he desired for you to live and the life that he created for us on this planet. It's not until our heart changes that we realize life isn't about me. It's not about me. And that's when we truly start living. Now, this is the life Jesus modeled for us. When he came to earth, this is the type of generous life that he modeled for us. He didn't live his life for himself. He lived it for us. He came here to give, to give his life as a ransom for our sin. That's what we're called to do, to give. He came to rise again to give us eternal life. He came to pave the way for the Holy Spirit to live in every believer, to empower us, to be witnesses for Jesus in Chini and to the ends of the earth. This is generosity. This is Jesus' generosity to us. And we get to now be the hands and feet of Jesus and let our generosity model the life of Christ to the world. Now, all this begins when we surrender to Jesus. When we surrender everything about our life to Jesus, this type of generosity begins to flow out of us everywhere with the words we say, with the actions we have, with the things we do, with the ways we give, with the time we give, with the financial outlook that we have on our world. See, all of this begins as we surrender our rights, our passions, our hopes and dreams to the life that Jesus has for us. See, generosity helps us focus on others instead of ourselves. Generosity helps us start giving and stop taking and keeping. Generosity helps us get our heart and our mind in the right direction. That's why generosity is so important. See, generosity helps us put our hope in God. Generosity helps us put our treasure and our investment in the right place. And generosity helps us take hold of the life that is truly life. Now, this morning, I thought it was extremely important for us not to just learn about generosity, but to be people that were generous. You probably saw a short video that I did for you this week and that uh, was aired on our YouTube channel, and I just want to follow up with that this morning right now. And that is, I want us to have an opportunity to be generous. That's why we are starting two giving campaigns, two opportunities for you to give and be generous to people that need help around us and so that you and I can be the hands and feet of Jesus. We're going to give in a local way and a global way. The local opportunity that we are going to give to is the Cheney Food and Clothing Banks. Both are organizations in our city that have been helping people through the coronavirus, and we wanted to help them with the needs that they have to help them get more food, to get more clothes, so that they can be a help to those in need. The second way is a global opportunity, a global way that you can give. And we wanna to give to Think Small. 
Think Small is a nonprofit missionary organization run by Gary and Paula Hayes that we give to on a regular monthly basis as a church. You'll remember Gary and Paula came and spoke uh, about a year ago at our church. But Gary and Paula are uh, they're in countries all around the world helping children come to believe in Jesus Christ and trying to change the next generation for Jesus so that generations of people can believe in Jesus all around the world. Well, they have been uh, ministering in the Democratic Republic of Congo, especially in the eastern part of Congo, that has been hit hard, really hard with the coronavirus, and hit hard because the diamond and gold mines that are there almost work like gangs, and they kind of kidnap people from their villages and take them, and, um, and they force them to work in the mines. And, and Think Small has been taking food and clothing and other things to those villages and helping them in this difficult time of need, and we would like to be generous towards them. Some of them are our brothers and sisters in Christ because they have come to believe in Jesus through the ministry of Think Small, and so we want to be generous to them, and we want to help them in their struggle and in their time of need. Now, you can give online at our website, or you can give in person at the church office, uh, and I, so I just want to encourage you to be generous, and I want to encourage you to, um, to just find a, a way to give to the Lord. Find a way to give to one of these things. Maybe you have your stimulus check still and you're wondering what you could do with it. Well, here's a great way. Now, another great way you can give is you can purchase an awesome shirt like the one I'm wearing that says, We Heart Genie. We Love Genie. Now, if you purchase one of these shirts, which are, they are available on our website, they are being sold for $20. Now, we bought them for $6, but we're selling them for $20. The reason we're doing that is because all of the proceeds above the $6, so $14, uh, is going to go to Cheney Food and Clothing Bank. So if you would like a cool shirt and you would also like to give to the Cheney Food and Clothing Bank, then that's a great way to do that, to be generous in that way. So you can give just monetarily, or you can buy a shirt, or you can do both at the same time. I would encourage both, because this shirt's pretty awesome. And you'll look really good in it. Now, another way, another thing that I wanted us to do, I wanted us to go above and beyond, and, and I wanted us to have another way to be generous. I also wanted us to learn that, we don't just be generous with our finances, although we definitely and absolutely should. We should also be generous with our time. We, we should also be generous with our abilities, with our ways that we serve our community in the name of Jesus. And so next Sunday, July 26th, we have deemed we love Cheney Day. And we're not going to have church. We're not going to meet together digitally or in person. So there'll be no in-person or digital service next week. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go be generous in our community. So we want you to go out into your community and be generous and serve. And here's how this is going to happen. We will provide a couple ways, a couple organized ways, that you could jump in with some people and serve in one way in our community. Uh, and we will have those ideas, those times, and those places to meet to go serve uh, on our website, and they'll also go out in email form this week. But what we really want to encourage you to do is to find someone around you that you know that you could be generous with. Maybe it's a neighbor, a coworker, uh, maybe a friend, maybe someone you just drive by their house on a regular basis and and you just realize maybe they need some help with some work outside. I want to encourage you to be generous. So take your family and go to that house, knock on their door, and ask if you can serve in some way. Or just find some way. Call somebody. Figure out a way that you could be generous with your life, with your time, and with your service towards someone else. And, uh, and maybe it could even be that you walk up and down the streets uh, near your home just picking up trash. We didn't get to do Cheney Clean Sweep this year, and so that would be something you could do as well. I just, here's what I'm encouraged about. I'm hoping, I'm hoping 
We bought 200 of these shirts. I'm hoping that we, we have 200 people from our church scattered all over our community with these shirts. We love Cheney next Sunday, next Sunday morning. And everyone around our city says, oh, who are those people that love us? And as we model that we love them, it gives us a great opportunity to tell them Jesus loves them and to present the gospel of Jesus Christ to them. And so I want to encourage you, would you join us and be generous with your time and with your service next Sunday as we celebrate We Love Cheney Day. Hey, I'm excited about this. I'm excited that as a church, we can spread the love of Jesus all over our city, all over our community. It's going to be an awesome way for us to let us be generous and to be the hands and feet of Jesus. So join us. You can give online uh, to the two different local campaign, global campaign, buy a shirt, and then join us next Sunday for We Love Cheney Day. It's going to be awesome. Well, let me close in prayer. Jesus, I thank you so much for today. I thank you for what you're doing in our hearts. I pray that you would change us. Holy Spirit, would you, would you change our hearts and our minds? Would you help us to be people that are generous? Help us not to be arrogant. Help us not to put our hope in wealth. Help us not to put our hope in a wealth system like America. Help us not to put our hope there first. Help us to put our hope in you first. Lord, we know we live in a great country, and it's awesome to live here, and it is a huge blessing, and we're not going to take that for granted. We love being Americans. But since we've come to believe in Jesus, we're Christians first. We're believers in Jesus Christ first. That's our priority. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to be people that are generous, generous with the gospel of Jesus Christ, generous to share it, generous with our finances, generous to give to the kingdom of God, generous to help the missionaries that we have in our church, generous to, to give and to tithe and to give offerings so that we're storing up treasure in heaven. I pray that you would help us to be willing to share. I pray that you would help us to be people that are doing good deeds in the name of Jesus Christ and that we're sending treasure up to heaven because, Lord, it can't be taken away from us there. Jesus, we give you thanks that you were so generous to us. Your generosity is overwhelming, and I pray that we would live in your generosity towards us, that we would live in your grace, we would live in your truth, we would desire to live righteous and holy lives because your generosity is so overwhelming. Jesus, would you help us to live this way, to be generous people because you're generous to us. And Lord, I pray that you would help us when we go out next week and we have We Love Cheney Day. I pray that you would help us to be an influence in our community. I pray that you would help people to see us serving them all around them and that they would ask us, why are you serving us? And we can say, it's because Jesus served us and we love you. We know Jesus loves you and we want you to come to believe in Jesus as your Savior. So Lord, I pray that you would provide lots of ways for us to serve. I pray that each of us would make a choice and a, a decision to grab hold of this life that is truly life and to serve next week. Let this, for some of us, this might be the first step in being generous. And I pray that it would, would, would be, that some of us are gonna, this will be our first step in really being generous with our time and our resources and and our abilities, and our ability to serve. And Lord, may that break something in each of us, in our hearts and our minds, so, so that we would grab hold of what we are called to do to be on mission for Jesus. Lord, we love you, we thank you, and we praise you. Help us to be like you, and help us to live for you daily. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, thanks for being with us today. Always remember, Jesus love you, and so do Kate and I. See you later. Thank mm -hmm. you.